Alright y'all, we're going to start our next chapter today. This is actually a really short chapter, it's just four lessons. I might combine it, with, and it's four le sections I might do in two or three videos. I also might combine it with the next chapter that follows. That's usually what I do, so we'll see. Chapter 8 is on functions. You should have learned functions before. A function is any relation where each input goes to exactly one output. Okay, so if I have the input of 2, I can only have one output, be it 3 or 8 or something, but each input goes to only one output. We tend to think of them as equations, and the mathy term for equation is actually the word rule. We tend to think of them as rules, but they really can be anything. Uh, a common and simple example is just a player in a sport. Okay, so I can have a function where the input is player number and the output is the points. And, and I can make a relation that takes the set of inputs and maps them to the set of the outputs. Okay, so maps is just a way of saying like gets to or points to or how it moves from one to the next. So inputs and outputs form the domain and the range okay the set of inputs is called the domain and the set of outputs is called the range let's say that player 4 scored 16 points player 16 scored 12 points player 2 scored 1 player 11 scored 1 and player 5 scored 13 this is a function and sports have to have functions because player 4 can't have scored 16 points in a game and 12 Right? Like, both those aren't possible if we're going to count his total points scored. So, each input can only go to one output, and that makes it a function. If I wanted to list the domain of this function, that would be a list of all the possible inputs. And all the possible inputs are pretty straightforward. 4, 5, 11, 16, 22. We tend to give our domains and our ranges in, in numerical order, so keep doing that. The range is a set of all the outputs, which is 1, 12, 13, 16. You'll notice the number 1 here was repeated twice. There were two players that only scored one point. I don't list it twice, though. I just want to list what appeared. So number 1 appeared. I'm not listing how many times it appeared, just the fact that it appeared. So the domain is all your inputs. The range is all your outputs. There's a bunch of ways we can show this data. What I showed here is basically a mapping it's also kind of a table. Like if I wanted to just do this, I could call it a table. But it can be shown as a table, as a mapping that points from inputs to outputs, as a graph where um, this person, player 11, scored one point and player 22 scored one point. This, this actual specific example cannot be shown as an equation. Because it's not like 2 times the number of somebody's points plus 3. There's no equation that gets you from their number to their points scored. right? It's not going to be um, a rule that follows some set pattern every single time. So this one has a table, a mapping, and a graph. Oftentimes we also have equations, but this one doesn't. But the table, the mapping, the graph, and the rule, the function rule, are four different ways we can show the same information. Show the same relationship between x and y, or input and output, or domain and range. And again, you'll note, for all of these functions, because it's all one function, for this function that's shown in all these different ways, the domain and range is the same. Okay, in the above example, the player number got mapped to the points scored. And that doesn't have any sort of equation or rule. Because there's no way to map inputs to outputs like that. Um, frequently, there is an equation, or a rule as we call it. And we denote that with this function notation f of x. So when you see f of x, that just means y. All right. So usually we do functions with y equals something. But so that everybody can know what we're dealing with as a function, we replace the y with f of x f of x just tells us that we have confidence, we have certainty, that we know if we plug one number in for x, we're only going to get out one possible number for y. So whenever you see f of x, just think of this as y. So here's a function rule, f of x equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 8. We can plug in numbers for x that are the input and get out values for f of x, which are the outputs. So for example, this is read as f of 3. Don't say f times 3, don't say f parentheses 3, this is f of 3. And this means Take your function and plug in a 3 for all the x's. So wherever I had an x, 
here and here, I will now have a three. Make sure you do your order of operations correctly. So three squared is nine. 18, two times nine is 18. 18 minus 18 plus eight is zero, plus eight is eight. So if I plug in a three for x, I get out an eight for y. The input was three, the output was eight. We can do it again, f of negative two means I'm gonna plug in negative two for x. Negative two squared is four. So I get eight plus 12 plus eight, which is 28. My input was negative two, my output was 28. I can even plug in things that aren't just numbers. Like sometimes I'll write f of Spider-Man or f of Batman or f of Doug or whatever. But you can plug in whatever you are told to plug in for x. Whatever you need to make your input, you can make your input. So here, I'm going to plug this 3a. I'm going to plug 3a in for this x here and this x here. So it becomes 2 times 3a squared minus 6 times 3a plus 8. So that's 2 times 9a squared minus 18a plus 8. So it's 18a squared minus 18a plus 8. If I plug in a 3a, I get out this, inputs and outputs, x's and y's, it's good stuff. Okay, so the table, the mapping, the graph, and the rule are all different ways of showing the same relation. Okay, the relation is the general term we have for getting from one set of data to another. The mapping is the one we see the least frequently. We almost always replace mappings with tables because tables have a higher sense of organization. But table, graph, rule, those are how we build and show our relations. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is talk about graphs specifically. Uh, you can tell if a function, or really you can tell if a graph is a function if it passes what's called the vertical line test. The vertical line test basically means if I draw a vertical line at any point on this graph, is there any point where a vertical line crosses my graph more than one time? In this graph, we pass the vertical line test because every vertical line hits the graph only once, so therefore it's a function. And this graph passes the vertical line test sometimes, but there's plenty of cases where it doesn't. Like here, this vertical line hit the graph three times. It fails the vertical line test. Since it fails the vertical line test, it's not a function. One input can go to several outputs. Specifically, the input one goes to like point eight, two, and three. The input of one can go to point eight, or it can go to two, or it can go to three, so therefore it's not a function. Now, not being a function isn't a bad thing. It just means that what you have doesn't have the functional relationship where one input goes to only one output, so we can't call it a function. Same with this one here. Fails a vertical line test, not a function. Uh, these three down here are functions because they're all just straight lines. Okay, so there's the vertical line test. It's a quick way to see if a graph is a function or not. The last thing we're going to talk about today is domain and range um, from a graph. I want to talk about the domain of this graph. Domain means all the x values. Okay, it's the set of all inputs, set of all x values. Uh, I'm going to draw a vertical line. And I'm going to think about that vertical line like it's a s a the line of a scanner or a copier or a printer um, scanning over a sheet of paper. And if at any point this pink vertical line hits the graph, then that part of the graph is part of the domain. So you'll note that right now, if x is negative 5, I'll zoom in so we can see it better. If x is negative 5, I hit the graph. And I keep hitting the graph as I scroll to the right all the way over until x is four. So this um, function has a domain that lasts from negative five all the way until four. So I would say the domain goes from negative five to four. And what I just wrote right here is called interval notation. The parentheses mean where you start and where you end, or the brackets. Brackets mean where we start and where we end. I do this for you with your homework all the time. I'll say your homework is like 1 through 31 odd. Well, I'm using interval notation 
to point out that that's 1 through 31. So this means all the numbers negative 5 to 4 appeared on my graph. And there weren't any breaks in between. For this one here, even though it's not a function, it still has a domain and a range. There's a value at negative 5, and there's a value at 6, but everything in between is also part of the graph. Like there's an x value at negative 2 somewhere, there's an x value of 0 somewhere, there's an x value of 3 somewhere. This graph has a domain that goes from negative 5 to 6. Let's slide over. This graph has a domain that goes from negative 5 to 6 as well. I'm looking for all of the x values that appear, the lowest x point to the highest x point, negative 5 to 6. They're not just the points that are touching the x-axis. A lot of people just think it's points touching the x-axis, but like this one here wasn't, and this one here wasn't. So this domain went from negative 5 to 6. Domain is all the x values. I'll do the range next. Range is all the y values. I'm going to do the same thing. Think about which what's the lowest and highest y values that appear, and it goes from negative 2 to 5. Okay, this is a range from negative 2 to 5. This one has a range that goes from 4 to 0. So the lowest y point was 0 right here and right here, and the highest y point was 4. So this has a range that goes from 0 to 4. And this one, the lowest point is negative 4, the highest point is 4. This has a range that goes from negative 4 to 4. Okay, there's three more down here. They're going to highlight some differences about how the range can be expressed. Domain and range. So domain is all the x values, range is all the y values. Notice how this has open circles. Open circle means we're not including the point. So it's like this is going um, all the way up to this point here, which is the point 5, 3. It's like the x values get really, really, really close to 5, but don't actually become 5. If you don't include the point, then the domains use parentheses instead of brackets. So here we had a closed circle, so we used um, bracket. Here we have an open circle, so the domain is going to go from negative 4 to 5 with parentheses. Parentheses mean you don't include the point, brackets mean you do include the point. This, you can't see it very well in the second graph. This is actually an arrow pointing forever. The domain of this graph is going to go from negative 4, but not including the negative 4, all the way up to infinity. Because it doesn't stop, right? It starts at negative 4, but then it just keeps going forever. There's always an x value headed off to the right. So infinity will always be in a parenthesis. It's never going to be in a bracket. If ever you have a parenthesis, if, sorry, if you ever have infinity, put in a parenthesis. This third one has a domain of all real numbers. We see it goes from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, see if you can do the range. Range is the y values. Try and do the range of these. This range is going from negative 3 to 3. This range is going from 4 down to infinity. So we call this from 4 to negative infinity. And I'm going to switch that order. Always go from least to greatest with domains and ranges. So this range goes from negative infinity to 4. And this is a range of all real numbers as well. So it goes from negative infinity to infinity. Negative infinity means left or down. Infinity means right or up. All of these could have been written in another format. What I just showed was interval notation. You also could do set notation. So let me show set notation next. I'm going to take these intervals and write them all with sets. So this went from negative 5 to 4. That's the interval, negative 5 to 4. The set would be, you use the set bracket, x, and you say negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. You know what? I don't think I want to worry about intervals right now, or about sets right now. We'll talk about that one in class. Um, so if I don't talk about it in class, remind me to, but I will. We'll just do intervals for today, because that's enough. Okay. So we've got interval notation, we've got the vertical line test, where you can see if a function is a function, but if it passes the vertical line test. Domain and range, functions, we'll save this one for next time. Okay, well done.